Hi, I'm David Feinberg. I'm the project director and uh, contact PI for this brain initiative project to develop a high resolution next generation 7T scanner. Uh, the scientific challenges uh, we are addressing to design and collaboratively build the next generation 7T scanner um, is to increase the spatial resolution considerably. And this is enabled by uh, greater gradient encoding capabilities and higher signal sensitivity and uh, increased data acquisition speeds. And this is for human neuroscience and eventually medical applications. Uh, the immediate application areas are circuitry studies in the cortex and structural and functional imaging, as well as bridging non-invasive MRI uh, human imaging to cellular scale studies in animal models. And a project goal was to achieve 0.4 millimeter osteotropic resolution in fMRI. So why do we need higher spatial resolution in fMRI circuitry studies of cortical lamina and columns is because currently 7T provides down to about 0.75 isotropic resolution, which gives about two or three pixels across most cortex, which is two to four millimeters typically. So higher resolution with the next gen 7T scanner will enable uh, imaging with much less partial voluming of the layers as well as the PL vessels and um, Etc. So layer fMRI uh, circuitry studies have been uh, conducted. Here's some by um, Huber. And um, this shows the uh, sensory uh, cortex contralateral um, connectivity correlating with the motor cortex in circle to the um, outer layers of the cortex, the uh, supergranular layers. And this is um, uh, well known and predicted by uh, tracer studies. Um, and uh, the uh, input fibers are seen going from S1 into the uh, outer layers of M1, as, as shown in the studies. The scanner will also be used for um, uh, medical research uh, eventually, but we know that structural imaging is very critical for example, is looking at uh, epilepsy, uh, structural abnormalities and changes. <clears throat> Uh, it'll also be used to bridge non-invasive mesoscale fMRI to cellular neuronal studies, as we have uh, piloted some studies already with uh, Dr. Eddie Chang's lab at UCSF, looking at ECOG and 7T fMRI in superior temporal gyrus, um, looking at higher order associative auditory cortex. Project status and timelines, I've broken up into three general areas of the components. The scanner system, of course, has many um, subsystem components, and uh, these have now all been uh, built and with great effort uh, been uh, integrated at Berkeley. Uh, and we anticipate by spring, uh, they will be, um, testing will be completed. This includes a, a very novel new head gradient coil, 120 channel receiver transmit system, a new uh, coil uh, interface box. The receiver transmit coils are being uh, designed and built in three different groups. Um, a small company, MR Coil Tech, we currently have a 96 channel coil from them and we're testing it. The Harvard group is uh, making a, a more uh, uh, advanced uh, coil 128 channel with ACDC shimmer ray. And the Berkeley group is also doing very innovative work to do printed coil to very, very tight fitting. A pulse sequence development is proceeding at multiple sites as well. So the expected dates are shown. Um, the coils will hopefully be um, available for testing and fully operational by uh, the end of this year. Uh, regarding anticipated date for human brain imaging, we already have institutional approval with IRB. And uh, this scanner is previously, before we tore it apart and put it together again with new components, it was an FDA approved device. And we know that 7T is a, um, a no human risk uh, in general. So um, this, this re removes a lot of um, constraints on the human imaging. I wanna go over some basic design concepts uh, that went into uh, the design uh, of the hardware. Um, first is that the scanner performance is increased by cumulative gains from multiple different hardware improvements and pulse sequence improvements. 
um, as well as the innovation improvements can impact multiple different performance parameters. Uh, these are standard uh, design uh, parameters of imaging systems, be it light microscopes or electron microscopes. Um, the spatial encoding, we need more signal to support the higher resolution and also much higher acquisition speeds because we're dealing with larger data matrices and larger, more slices. So all of these things need to improve to achieve the higher spatial resolution. And there are biological limitations in the MRI, uh, the heating, SAR, and acoustic noise, um, and the peripheral nerve stimulation and heart stimulation we have mitigated, and I'll talk about the technology in that regard. So um, all of these are under control and ultimately uh, limiting otherwise. Now, gradient encoding um, is a very critical part of this higher resolution. And I'll just show you a basic echo planar readout sequence where the brown boxes are the time integral of the pulses and the area of those uh, boxes or pulses is proportional to the resolution. Hence, to go to higher resolution, 0.5 millimeter, we need to double the length of the pulse in using the maximum gradient already with the standard body gradients. These are representative uh, values. Uh, but here you see that the higher resolution has a problem where it lengthens the echo time leading to more T2 star decay and lower signal to noise in the image. And this leads us to why we want a stronger, higher powerful uh, gradient system because the net gradient area can be uh, doubled uh, in this sense, but using taller pulses instead of longer pulses. Therefore, there's less T2 star decay, higher signal to noise in all the signals and more echoes per unit time. To achieve the uh, PNS uh, mitigation um, is uh, described here, but I should first say that this is a head only gradient coil. So there's uh, no covering the heart and no cardiac stimulation, which is limiting body gradients in general. The PNS um, stimulations are highly reduced because we designed the wiring pattern with a complete whole body model of the nervous system and the computer and um, check the values of the wiring patterns against uh, PNS thresholds in the model and in the areas of the face and the shoulders where you have the maximum effects of twitching or pain, we uh, are able to achieve much higher uh, threshold values. And so that's how the gradient coil was designed. Uh, it, many uh, gradients can achieve um, high uh, instrumentation slew rates of 500 or higher, but to uh, be able to use this in a human as we have tested in over 33 in PNS studies is really quite a novel achievement. I'm gonna show you uh, the scanner now integrated at Berkeley where um, it's uh, delayed due to uh, COVID, but um, the German scientists working through web-based conferences with uh, the uh, US uh, division, and we've, we've made progress. Uh, you can see here the gradient coil in the uh, deeper center of the bore of the magnet. The gradient coil itself is 44 centimeters, but it has acoustic um, uh, insulation and the bore liner, it's narrowing it to 39 centimeters. You can see the shoulder cutouts here, but the main en entry point of the scanner remains 60 centimeters. So there actually is not any significant, I don't notice any uh, increased claustrophobia effect because your head is in the um, coil. The, the head coil. Um, you see the connectors. This is the a coil connector box uh, connected to the uh, energy chain uh, cables going out the back. Um, you'll notice this funny little uh, safety diagram on it. That was a joke, an in-joke. Um, it's showing uh, actually a sled because the box looked like a sled when we first designed it. Um, so in any case, the, the uh, Table has an extender, as you see, which allows the head receiver coil to go into the gradient coil. Um, and all the cable connectors are in the back. In the back of the scanner, you see uh, two 64 channel receiver systems that are um, uh, combined in parallel to achieve the 128 channel system, requiring also a lot of computer uh, interfaces and additional hardware interfaces. And in the center, you see the uh, energy chain coming out, which has uh, several hundred cables that are shielded. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, 
receiver system development and the design concept really came from our R24 project, proof of principle, where we tested multiple different diameter loops in small eight channel arrays and found that really the three to four centimeter loop diameter gave the highest signal uh, in the cortex um, beyond the scalp. Uh, and we wanted to uh, maintain that. So that meant that we need to cover the whole brain up to a 128 channel receiver system. It also um, educated us that the uh, coils need to be very close to the head to get maximum signal in the coil, in the cortex, neocortex. <clears throat> so when we, <clears throat> excuse me, designed the um, coils, the head formers were tested uh, three or four different uh, sizes and uh, received 80% uh, uh, fit on adult males and 100% in females in this particular coil built by Shajan at MR Coil Tech, the 96 channel coil we currently have. Um, here you see the um, coil uh, in the magnet set up with these um, uh, multiple uh, cable connectors that are uh, very easy to operate and you don't need to crawl into the back of the magnet to connect them as in many other, uh, you know, uh, head gradient systems that I've uh, worked on. So um, the uh, close fitting coil you can see here, um, this is some, uh, we only had one day to do testing in December and you can see um, uh, 64 images for each uh, receiver channel. There were 96 that were combined. Uh, we tested on different uh, size melons and uh, larger squash that are about the size of the head. And um, here you see a, a spaghetti squash that we image. And um, here's the result, a few of the images shown, uh, very pleasing high resolution images. Um, the gradients allowed a slightly earlier um, TE. Uh, but I think what was most interesting was the acceleration factors that we could uh, go up to um, as high as 18 on these initial tests, uh, which is uh, far higher than we could ever achieve on a 32 channel coil. And to my knowledge, a 64 channel receiver system and coil has been used on 7T, but this is the first time 96 channel or 128 channel receivers used. And I think it's uh, very promising to uh, know that our simulations could go up to 30 times acceleration. And I think that uh, we will uh, greatly increase the speed of imaging uh, with this um, higher density array with higher uh, spatial sensitivity and lower G factor in parallel imaging. The Harvard group is building uh, a more ambitious uh, 120 channel array and the uh, transmit system is a 24 channel using an array compression network uh, invented, proposed by Will Grissom and uh, multiplexes the 16 channel transmit. The 128 channel receiver array has already been built and bench tested, not yet uh, used on the scanner. And it will be um, tested and used for imaging before the ACDC shim array is integrated into it, which um, initial testing on 64 channel array at 7T has been performed and gave um, very good homogeneity and uh, good shimming. Uh, the Berkeley project is to a very novel one uh, doing a vacuum form uh, printing of the coils. Uh, they've been working on this. We, we knew this was a, more of a slow burn, longer project, but it's very promising in terms of its uh, progress and overcoming the problems. I want to briefly talk about uh, the pulse sequence development. I don't have time for much, but I want to draw your attention to some sequences that are used specifically for layer fMRI because they eliminate this large draining vein bias in standard gradient echo EPI. So the 3D grace and the vaso techniques, which are CBV uh, contrast, are um, used and are both being uh, greatly um, uh, improved in both coverage and sensitivity. Um, you can see on the vaso sequence, uh, Dr. Huber has a new sequence that uh, greatly extends the acquisition time using the contrast of low flip angles rather than an inversion pulse. And my group is applying uh, advanced acceleration techniques developed in 3D grace to 3D EPI. So an overview of the scanner, I've shown you all these new components, the uh, novel 
uh, gradient system will be further discussed at ISMRM this year, but it's very um, exciting that we can achieve 900 uh, slew rate. Uh, the receiver system has, we anticipate large impacts on both the signal and the acceleration speed. Um, so I want to give particular uh, uh, acknowledgement uh, to the great and coil designer, Peter Dietz, and also Matthias Davids, who did uh, the simulation modeling and received the ISMRM Young Investigator Robbie Award uh, a year ago for this work. Um, thank you for your attention.